Super excited to bring you some awesome product that just arrived today, fresh off the truck. This is the all new Mustang Mach-E. We got some two very, very special ones. These ones are first edition models. And that means they are the first ones to be sold here in Canada and the United States and there'll be some very happy owners very shortly taking delivery of these two vehicles. So let's go around. This is really my first impression of the vehicle. Now, a couple months ago, we were out here with a very similar vehicle to this one. Now we've got this super cool Grabber Blue. The Grabber Blue is a very uh, unique color that's only offered in the first edition uh, mach -E's and the GT. So this will be a very rare color for you to see on the road unless somebody ordered a first edition. They were one of the first people that were able to get in line, reserve one of these things, or they're a GT. Now the GTs haven't even started being produced in, in mass yet. So uh, the likelihood of you seeing one of these are very, very rare. So uh, let's put our focus on to the Grabber Blue. Both of these vehicles are equipped to the same level. It's a fully loaded uh, all-wheel drive extended battery uh, Mach-E. So this is kind of your top of the line. The next step up is going to be a GT. So let's take a look at this and let's see some of the really cool things about it. Number one, it's got a pony on the front of it. Is that the right thing to do? Should it have a Mustang on it? Now, we'll find out by the end of this video if it actually should have uh, bore the Mustang name. And I think for a couple reasons why it should, and maybe a couple reasons really why it shouldn't. Number one, why it shouldn't. The only reason, it's a four door. That's the biggest thing. There's been no other Mustang that's been created that's a four door. Is this the uh, right thing to bring in, the first time to bring in a four door and call it a Mustang? Well, we'll see. The coolest thing about these cars is like you probably know, is that they're all electric. But this is Ford's first real uh, big play at the all electric game. Now we had the Focus uh, that was out and you know, we sold some of those, but really nothing like we're gonna do here and nothing like the range we're gonna get out of these uh, new Mustangs. These are, this is basically an all around vehicle that you can use for your daily commute. And this is really going up against the Elon Musk, right? So uh, we're quite excited to have something that we can go against uh, the Tesla model. And really the tes Tesla Model Y is the one that uh, the Mustang Mach-E competes against. So something that's really unique and only unique to the, um, uh, the first editions are these red calipers. So you can only get the red calipers on the, uh, uh, the premium line with the uh, first edi editions package. That's one of the things that it comes with. You know, if you want to be uh, sure what kind of vehicle you have, you kind of got to read the whole thing, right? Mustang, Mach-E, uh, four, meaning four wheel drive, and X, I'm guessing the same kind of thing, right? So uh, you, you've got the top of the line. I'm wondering what the GT is going to look like. Is it going to be like this long of a badge? Or, or if you got a, if you got the lower end, will it just be a really short one? So the longer the badge does matter, I guess, in a Mach-E, so. <laughs> this is considered a 301 package. So uh, the, the premiums come in on a 300. So if you're online building these things and trying to spec out what kind of Mach-E you'd want, you'll see as soon as you click on Grabber Blue, it forces you to pick a 301. Now, you won't be able to get a 301 because you have to, it, it's a, basically a first editions and you have to be one of those first customers to reserve one of these. This color really pops out. I hope, hopefully it shows the same thing on the screen as it does here in person. It looks awesome. This is a color that brings back the heritage of the Mustang. I think first introduced in the late 60s, but was brought back again in 2014 and then was brought back again in 2017 as kind of a one-off color. So like the Grabber Blue is not a consistent color to come out with, but to bring it back out with the Mach-E uh, for the first year is pretty cool. And to have it only as a first year edition is also really, really neat. Uh, let's come around back here and we'll see the nice uh, um, tri tail lights and how those look. Very cool. Now, one thing I think is really neat, how they made this uh, silhouette of this vehicle look uh, even slimmer than what it actually is, is uh, just come around side here and take the side profile. You'll notice this uh, painted roof here. So this black painted roof really follows that heritage coupe fastback style 
of the Mustangs. You know, without it, you'd kind of have this kind of bigger, bulkier, what would look like, you know, this crossover type of vehicle, but it kind of just goes away, right? It makes, the, makes that blue really stand out and really look like a proper fastback, which is what you would expect out of a Mustang. And that kind of continues down at the bottom here uh, where it, it, it brings up the belt line. We've already seen a few things about the Amaki on the first video, just really quickly. But again, I'm so new at this because I've really just sat in these to move them here. So I want you to learn the way I'm kind of going to learn and maybe the way you're going to learn. And when you go check them out, either here at Island Ford or maybe at your local dealership, wherever that may be. So let's come around on the driver's side. I'll put you in the passenger side. And uh, let's start off there. This one, as soon as you're gonna open the door, you're gonna notice uh, the stitching. Very, very cool stitching. This one's got blue stitching on a black leather. And it's got really cool textile, like the, the, the speaker covers, you know, on the door panel, and as well as the console. It's got this really, really cool color. So I'm gonna jump in over to the driver's side take a look at this thing. So the first edition model is really, you know, uh, a special run of vehicles that's, that, that's limited in production. They only made, um, I think, a, maybe, was it a couple hundred in Canada? There was very, very few. Uh, I think we've only got three of them. Um, so there was very few uh, first editions that were actually built in Canada and the United States. But you'll be recognized, you'll know it's a first edition by the uh, unique sill plate. So that's a, one cool feature that, uh, that you get with this uh, first edition is uh, reminding yourself that you were one of the first people that believed uh, the electrified Mustang and bought into uh, this really, really cool vehicle. So coming into the vehicle, I mean, number one, you know, uh, after you kind of adjust the seats wherever you want to be, you're like presented with this massive display screen, right? And you got this really cool uh, display screen up here. And then it's like, you know, there's just a ton of room. You basically got a ton of room and the, the, the perspective of driving this vehicle actually, you know, even the hood lines and all that stuff and the depth and the way I'm sitting down right now reminds me of actually driving in a Mustang. You know, that same kind of perspective that, that I'm seeing but I could tell that I'm actually sitting up higher. It's almost like I'm sitting at the exact same level I would be on a Mustang, but now I'm just sitting like almost like a foot higher off the ground. So unlike an SUV, like if I was driving a, um, an Explorer or something like that, I definitely feel like I'm in a truck where this, I still feel like I'm a hundred percent in a car, but it's just like a, like a Mad Max Mustang in a sense, like a it's kind of raised up, lifted on, 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 on uh, bigger tires. I, I know this is not the case, but it just feels that way actually sitting into it, which is, which is actually really cool. So, you know, when you're going to jump in the, you're, jump in the car, uh, a couple things you're going to notice is, you know, you've got your pretty standard kind of, uh, you know, visors up here. You've got your garage door link, you know, uh, you got, you put your sunglasses up in here. You know, nothing really too special or awesome. It's just kind of typical car stuff. Nothing that is blowing you away and saying like, wow, they really reinvented this part of the car. Really, it's, it's all the same. But one of the things I want to say that they did reinvent, at least in my, you know, Ford world, is this roof right here. This is unreal. Like the, the, we, we have one of the best sunroofs in our F series trucks and that's carried on to many different models. This crushes it. It absolutely crushes it. Now it's fixed. You, you can't, you can't open it, but I'm telling you that full glass roof is super, super cool. It, it actually would make me like reminisce in the fact that actually I'm going to do it. I'm just going to step in the back and see how it feels to be in the back seat because I think the rear passenger always gets a better view. Oh yeah, way better. That's so cool. It's almost like, it's not quite like you're in a convertible because you got kind of this pillar coming up here, but it is so neat. Never really experienced such a great, you know, glass and it's like, it's, it's really cool. 
that's uh, that's super that's super uh, <laughs> super awesome, I should say. I don't know how to, how to say it any other way. Obviously, you can see my expression. It's really cool. Uh, so uh, full glass roof in the Mustang Mach-E, which is really neat. Now, I've experienced this a few times now, opening and closing the doors. You know that the Mach-E has just like an actuator button to open the doors, right? They're like super simple. You just push the button and then the, the door basically, like the door basically uh, pops open and then you kind of pull it back with that little lever. In the rear seat, in the rear uh, uh, door, they have the same button, but it's, it's um, uh, uh, it basically the door just pops open and then you're able to just grab the back of the door. So it's the same kind of actuator that's in the front, but the front, for some reason, they added this little weird little contraption that looks like a door handle, but it's fixed, right? It doesn't actually move. Uh, it just stays right there. So that's cool, but that's not, I don't, I find that really cool because it's, it's different. You know, most cars have door handles and, but what I'm really loving is this, uh, the way you open the door when you're inside. Check that out. Um, you could, well, you could see it on my side or you can see it on your side. So, so you grab this little tiny door handle. It's like a mini door handle. <laughs> it's, it's like the size of like, you know, for me, like a finger and a three quarters or something like that, you know, like it's like a one finger deal, you know, it's like, and, and it's got this really cool, uh, I think what's neat about it versus the outside, it's just like, it's kind of like a button, right? So it's just like, you know, ding and then it pops open but this one it's it's like textile like you're actually pulling something but then you're really not because it's really just an electronic actuator that you're 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 doing so it's like it's like it feels like you're opening the door with one finger but you're really just actuating this actuator to open the door i don't know if that makes any sense and and so it's like spring loaded it's really cool um you know for this is just the doors. <laughs> I'm excited about how the door open and closes. Um, you know, like check this out. This is the cool thing right here. So look at, as I open the door and I'm going to keep this, there's this customer, you know, caution, you know, the, the factory puts that on. So nobody uh, removes it. So we leave that on for the customer and let them experience basically pulling that film off. You got this awesome 15 inch display. So let me like open the door and now check this out and what it does. And you got this like light shining through the Mach-E basically going over the different body lines, going all the way around, you know, displaying it. And actually it's like a feature. It shows the resolution that the screen actually have. You know, the screen itself, I wouldn't say right now it's like 4K. I think that might be a little too uh, um, too good. It might probably more like 1080p type of thing. I don't really know the resolution of it, uh, but I would say just from looking at it uh, compared to like a nice high def uh, 4K TV, probably more looks like an older, you know, 1080p uh, television. So, you know, um, start button. Uh, uh, basically, this is the power button or, yeah, they call it power start stop. So uh, foot on the uh, the brake. Actually, that's one thing that's unique to this vehicle. I don't know if you can see it. You got these these lights. Uh, I guess we could probably change those those different lights. So basically, we got these um, um these power or the pedals that are covered in this metallic finish, and that's one of the first editions um, basically features that that you get with this vehicle. So um, again, this is like so new uh, to me. Um, so therefore, it's so new to you that. It still has uh, what's called transportation mode on. So this vehicle hasn't been yet uh, uh, gone through its uh, pre-delivery inspection through our technicians. So you can see here, transport mode is still on. It's given us another 12 volt battery state is of low. So it's just giving me this kind of warning sign. So we haven't driven this thing. I haven't driven it. I literally drove it uh, maybe uh, 100 yards, uh, not even. And I'm really going to, today I'm going to talk about the experience, like what you're kind of getting within and hopefully afterwards we can get you, uh, get you the kind of the driving experience before these vehicles uh, get delivered. On the door, your, your window controls, uh, totally standard, um, you know, taken from every other basically Ford vehicle you've ever bought or recent ones, uh, same, same controls, um, you know, from, I, I, I want to say this almost looks like an expedition. Um, kind of the controls for this, you know, your window controls and, you know, auto up, auto down, 
you know, typical stuff. And then you've got your, your lock and uh, unlock for your doors and then your memory seats are sitting right there. Over here, you've got basically your uh, lighting controls. Again, very, very similar to every other model. The one exception here I wanna say is this Max, um, we'll call it Max Defrost. So that's kind of interesting, is a Max Defrost. It's actually also on the, uh, the dash here as well. Uh, but for some reason, they give you the option to hit the button here. That might be that when it's so cold out, um, you know, if you're a true Canadian in some of the uh, winters that you guys have been experiencing, it's, it's, this is February, I'm in t-shirt weather, uh, and that's why you need to move to Vancouver Island if you live in anywhere else part of the country. Um, but, you know, minus 40 and this thing's taking a while for the screen to boot up or something like that. I, don't, I guess you could just hit that button and then it just does its uh, uh, max defrost. Maybe that's a Canadian uh, Canadian feature only. <laughs> the Mexican and, and United States version doesn't have that. So uh, anyway, so that's kind of run of the mill. Uh, the same kind of button setup that we have on, on, on our F-150s or our new F-150s. Uh, a couple things that are different, or sorry, that are not different. Um, you know, our, our steering wheel controls, they're actually, um, yeah, just kind of very, very simple. Um, you know, I, I don't know if it's taken from another model. I can't really place it at this point. Definitely not Definitely not the new F-150. Those have like bigger paddles. I think they probably just were limited in space. But I have to say right off the bat though, grabbing the wheel, you know, and it has a full tilt, you know, telescoping, all that stuff function. And just grabbing the wheel, it's got this really like kind of, kind of small wheel feeling. Like it's like more of a racy type of wheel you know, where the trucks, and that's what I typically drive is F-Series trucks, and they're just, it feels a little bit bigger, where this is definitely a little bit uh, smaller. Now, one of the really neat parts about just driving this vehicle in such a short distance was the um, the power steering. Like, it, like, what? It, it feels like you're driving something that has, like, no weight to it. It's so light. Like, even right now, as I turn the wheel, and I'm dry steering the vehicle, it's like light as a feather. Like I'm literally moving it with one finger. I can't do that with an F-150. Like it, it just doesn't allow me. I mean, it, I'm sure it has the, the power to do it, but it just doesn't allow me to do that. So that's one thing I realized that like low speed, like even right now I'm turning the wheel and it feels like I'm just literally turning the wheel. I mean, there's a bit of resistance there, but nothing compared to what you would feel like just by you know dry turning a, a tire. Okay, the rotary dials down here, you know, it, it looks like kind of the other rotary dials we have. The only difference I would say is this really kind of cool finish to it. It's, it's, it's like thick, kind of makes it look like higher quality than what we have in our, um, uh, like our, again, our Expedition Platinum Edition, I'd say like, you know, that's kind of our highest vehicle that has this dial on it. And it doesn't feel uh, that dial, this dial just feels uh, a lot, like it has a lot more to it, almost like more tread on it, right? Um, you know, the other buttons, there's three other buttons on here. We've got our, um, you know, electronic parking, uh, park brake. And then I'm guessing this is some sort of uh, a parking assist. That's exactly what it is. It comes up as park aid. And then we have our four-way flashers. So, you know, really, as far as buttons goes, you're dealing with, you know, your, your, your straightforward buttons is everything else. Let me turn down the heat. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Uh, I could slide the heat up and down. <laughs> that's so neat. I'm not used to that kind of stuff, right? So one thing I haven't, we don't really know is what what is this guy right here? What's this little screen? You know, doodad. It hasn't really done anything at this point yet. It hasn't lit up or... Anyways, I don't know what that is yet. Uh, I'm sure you guys do. You've probably done your research and said, Justin, eh, you're a Ford dealer. You should have figured this out by now. Listen, I'm letting you guys do that. You can write us in your comments. Tell us what we've missed so far. The seats right now, you know, are really comfy. They're not, um, they're not uh, like your Recaro seats. They're more like I would say in the Mustang. They're just kind of your standard, you know, um, uh, premium seat that you'd, you'd get. Obviously, it's got heating, and cooled seats in it. Uh, it's got a heat, heated steering wheel, which is all cool and uh, all cool and stuff. So let's take a look at this first panel here. Now, I do have to say, 
um, you know, with the exception of the big giant, um, <laughs> whatever you call it there, a, a, a alarm that tells you, be careful, this car is not ready to drive yet. It's really crisp. Like the resolution of this screen, I almost want to say is better than the big screen. Maybe not. I don't know. It just seems really crisp. Um, uh, so this this 12-inch screen right here is super nice. And it's actually like like perfectly positioned in this kind of the center of the wheel, you know, when I'm while I'm looking at it. You know, it's like perfectly positioned. Oh wait, you get to see something on your screen that I don't. It's a little flashing lights. So to the naked eye, all I see is black, but now in the camera, I'm actually seeing these these lights that are showing up. Ah, interesting. So yeah, in real person, you won't see those lights. Looking at this, like you've got this, like as far as like a design cue, I, I, I'm really impressed by whomever in the team of Ford that designed this, because you've got this like very much, you know, kind of sporty wheel. You've got the, the you know, the feeling that you're sitting in a, in a sports car. Like, again, this is my, my perspective right here. It probably looks like that or something like that, or maybe like that. So you, you get the hood of that same perspective. And then um, you've got these really cool, like textile feelings and then, or like textile, I don't know, sensations, I should say. Uh, obviously the wheels like super smooth, like really nice premium leather. But then you got this like awesome, you know, um, just like an awesome texture. Now they've kind of brought that into the new F-150s, this like heathered color, like a like a, a black, a gray, and a white, like all kind of meshed in together in this, with the uh, B&O system, like a knit. Like your grandma knitted this and put it on your dash. <laughs> Check out this. It's got like a, it's kind of like a cavern in here. Really interesting. Like, you know, most dashes are kind of straight or actually the other way around. They're, they're, some of them like rise up in the middle. You know how the screens kind of pop up. Obviously, this big 15-inch screen rises up above it. But it, like, like styling-wise, it gives you the texture. It gives you the texture that, you know, it kind of goes down from like my angle. You know, my perspective is like it goes, you know, I'm looking at here. It's like it goes down and then you got this like cool screen. So it doesn't feel like, the screen's like awkwardly placed. And even down here, you know, you got a lot of lot of space. You got a charging pad for your cell phone right here. It'd be really cool to see one here on this side. Like really, you know, why not two? He's driving or she's driving with you. Get two of them. You know, who's out there going like, hey, do you got an iPad? Or do you got a, you got a charging, charging pad? You know, you got two. You, you might as well just do it. Spend the extra 50 bucks for it and get two. There's, there's my feedback. So... And then you've got your uh, USB, uh, USB uh, charging port. So you've got your traditional and then what the USB-C, I think it's called. Uh, and then, you know, your cup holders here and probably just a standard glove box. Yeah. Yeah. Just nothing just boring. Oh, this is kind of neat. So uh, that comes up and you got this kind of sliding cup holder. And if you ever wanted a cigarette lighter, oh, that's a, that's a pocket right in there. Um, okay, so the Mustang Mach-E only comes with one key, right? Which is kind of cool. So if the, if the key was, I'm guessing, uh, like dead or low, uh, this looks like a little holder for it right in here. It's super dark, I'm sure. But that, that, there's like a little pocket there. It's probably not for your change. You know, for us Canadians, it would be toonies and loonies. Uh, don't stuff your American bills and shove them in there. So as far as space-wise, you know, kind of sit next to my cameraman here. A little bit bigger than a Mustang, I think. It feels that way. It feels like we got a little bit more space. Um, probably like a Ranger. I don't know. I'm, I'm comparing to a car or a truck. Um, so let's get into basically the, the, the beast of this thing. Without spending too much time and giving you a tutorial on this, because this is the worst time for me to give you a tutorial because I don't really know anything about it. Let me kind of tell you what I would experience as a user. Again, this vehicle is in transportation mode, so I don't know what we're going to discover, if it's a good thing or a bad thing. But let's, uh, let's just dive into it. So this looks like the home screen. And right now, you know, outside of adjusting some temperature, which is really the coolest way I've ever adjusted temperature, we got our heated seats, 
what is that? It's probably like an intelligent seat. So, and then obviously, you know, your, your uh, heated steering wheel, you got uh, your fan speeds, which you have different levels of auto. Uh, one thing that's unique in the Mach-E versus the Model Y, you'll notice is obviously the, uh, the tactile, um, you know, radio. So uh, right now it's a, whoa, that was cool. Now, what I do know is, again, transportation mode, I believe, disables the battery uh, or disables the stereo. Um, you can see <laughs> something about the navigation shows that we're in Mexico. These are Mexican-built uh, vehicles. The Ford assembly plant, so the last time this thing was actually activated was at the Ford assembly plant right here. Uh, it gives you a good idea of what it looks like. What else do I see? I, uh, obviously, that Max... Uh, defrost, we got the rear defrost, we got the passenger uh, seat. Obviously, this is the volume button, I'm guessing. That's kind of what it does. Maybe it does something else. You could also push it in. So maybe that does something. I don't know because it's not doing anything right now. Um, let's go back and see what else we got. Okay, so we got different drive modes. Um, okay, did you guys watch the video? If like for the true Maki -E enthusiast, the guy who like you know, created the soundtrack. I was so confused with that video that Ford put out. I, I could not understand what they were trying to get to, you know, the guy who designed this, but I'm, I'm guessing, you know, just driving it will probably really experience this kind of like, you know, what's called engage and whisper and then unbridled has like that like lively sound. So these are kind of changing the different uh, sounds of the vehicle and uh, it gives you a different, like just, just different look you know when I click on that the 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 dash changes colors and it kind of like matches we go to whisper it goes to like you know the quiet and unbridled it's like it's like I'm gonna turn this thing on right one pedal drive might mean that it naturally as soon as I let go of the the uh, the gas it it starts decelerating and they do that to regenerate so it could be a, a very efficient way for you to drive so it, the car always knows when to be um, uh, to be regenerating. So it's kind of like a, just a different different feature. I'm guessing that's what it is. I, I remember hearing about that auto ambient light selection. So look at that. It's got little information. It's pretty cool. It's kind of like what you'd expect on like a phone or something like that, like an app. It's like I don't really know what it is. Like I I, I don't think I've ever seen like an eye for you know get for more information on a kind of a car screen at least in the Ford world. Uh, so anyways, that's that control. We got um, cameras. So this gives you an idea right now um, about, you know, what we're seeing. So we've got our red car, our red uh, Mach-E right beside us. And then we got ours, which is right here. And you can see we're sitting at the service check-in. So we're actually taking up some of our precious customers' uh, parking spots, just trying to get out of the wind. Um, so that's a all around uh, view and it gives you the front view here and you know what it's it's actually really crisp it's kind of a little wonky right here and it's kind of weird I wonder what this button does oh look at that that's cool right like you could zoom in on certain corners of the car so if you're like backing up okay that changes the front front view I changed that kind of front view it gives you a wider perspective so you could see here, this this one gives you just, you could take a look here, and you'll see you'll get a wider span and actually probably a better view because it takes all three cameras. There's three ca cameras that are there. And then just the front, and then you get, this gives you the top. Hmm. And I bet you if I put in reverse, yeah, it's going to be the reverse. And then as, as I turn. And one thing is, I don't know if it's like the mode we're in right now. If you could hear that... Ding, ding. It's like a like a backup beeper for like a big truck. It doesn't sound quite like that, but anyways, go into parking. So press the P hotkey to access park assist. Oh, that's the button right here. So yeah, there you go. So that's what the parking assist. Have never used it on this vehicle, which would be kind of cool. So that's when you're charging your vehicle. It kind of lights up the charge charge port, so you can turn that on and off. So when you're plugging it in. Driver assistance. Oh wait, that's auto hold. So what does one pedal drive mean? Oh, is that regeneration? I think that's, 
uh, then if this is auto hold, auto hold means that when you come to a full stop and you're in like a drive through or whatever it is, you turn this on, uh, you basically would come to a full stop and be able to let go of the, of the brake and it would hold you there until you hit the gas. Additional settings gets us into like a bunch of stuff. Look at that. That's so cool. Cruise control, speed limit assist, you know, turn that off. Uh, <laughs> pre-collision access, uh, rear view camera display. Don't know what, what that means or how that means. Driver alerts, auto hold. So that kind of like your, your basic things. That's kind of cool. Cruise control, you have normal, adaptive, and intelligent. Automatic, intelligent, automatically adjust your vehicle speed to the posted speed limit and selected tolerances. Oh, so that's cool. So it gives you like, yeah, so you got like your old school, like I'm going to hit the other car behind, uh, in front of me. <laughs> Adaptive, I'll slow down for you. And intelligent, I won't speed. So that's kind of cool. And then you could set your certain tolerances. So you could go like speed limit less, uh, I'm guessing a certain speed, how many kilometers. So like, I don't want to go any more than seven. My dad always told me like, Justin, around eight kilometers more an hour, like you're probably good. If you're doing 100, you could do 108, they'll leave you alone. And uh, yeah, that must be it. So uh, speed warnings, probably that kind of stuff. Okay, those are the, those are some of those things. Okay, vehicle, what other? Whoa, a whole bunch of other stuff. What can you do with the windows? Remote open and close. That's kind of cool. So obviously, maybe with your Ford Pass app or right right on the key fob itself, you could do that. Uh, what else is kind of weird? Auto fold. That's pretty easy on your uh, tire mobility kit. Oh, it tells you how old your tire mobility kit is. Maybe like it's a reset. Sets reminders. Yeah, for your expiration because those things eventually go old, right? So that's kind of cool. Uh, brake coach, which is always cool. Low battery, your sign. Uh, and then you could just change it from kilometers or miles per hour, I'm guessing. Yeah, just like that. Okay, uh, let's go into now general. Uh, changing a whole bunch of just general stuff. Intelligent suggestions, totally touch. Okay, cool. About sync. Okay, display, calm, turn it off. If you don't want all this stuff going on, you just turn it off. And then I think when you click on it, you're kind of good to go. Uh, where were we? I usually don't get lost in this stuff. <laughs> that is insane, guys. Look at, check this out. So we were at general. And then, then you get into like the displays. You get into clock. Check that out. Uh, hotspot. Vehicle system updates, mobile apps. Whoa. Departure and comfort. Now that is cool. Oh, check that out. So, okay, you could set up, let's say Monday. At, I go to work at, let's say, I go to work for 8. So you leave home for like 7.35, let's just say. And you want it to be warm. Boom. Boom. Every Monday at 7.45, your car, I'm guessing you will come into your car as a warm car. That takes remote uh, start and stop to the totally next level. That's so cool that you could program. And, and look, at there's two different times. That's so cool. 911, that's just, if you get in a crash, basically, they'll automatically call out of your phone, basically. Voice controls. L listen for the word the wake word, just like, hey Siri. So now it's okay Ford. So that's what it's all about. So like our Alexa is now okay Ford. That's kind of cool. Oh, it works. <laughs> uh, advanced modes, I don't even know what that is. Uh, Lazy speak, okay, and ambient lighting. A lot, of, a lot of cool things in here, a lot of different settings. Like, wow, spend some time <laughs> getting to know your car. But I uh, just want to show you a couple of last things. You got this function here that I just discovered. It kind of shows you the car on the inside, but it gives you kind of the, you know, your defrost in a very visual way. You know, that's the front defrost. It gives you like the zone. So like, like check that out. You can click on it and it like tells you all the vents it's coming out of. 
I've never seen that before, which is really cool, right? Like, whoo, and then, I don't know what that means. Oh, that, you could change the heat in, in each of these different zones. <laughs> That's pretty neat, eh? So, anyways, that closes that. Uh, there's a, The owner's manual is now just right in here. You could watch some videos if you want. Uh, and then over here, you got you could add the phone. So, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of, lo- a lot. <laughs> Whoa! I love this stuff. And that's going to keep me interesting for, or interested for a long time. You could do a lot of different things with this car. Uh, if you just want to, like, like, come in and, like, hit the power button and just go and plug your current, I'm sure you could do that as well. Uh, but it's... it's, it's this thing is pretty intense. It's super cool. Obviously, the people who are buying this are people like technology. And this is like, like, I thought there was some really complicated stuff before, like driven a lot of different vehicles, uh, different, you know, luxury vehicles. This is like takes it to the, like the whole next level. So um, anyways, let's throw this on back on for our our customer i said at the very beginning uh, this was kind of my first experience as you kind of saw i really didn't do any of that stuff before this that was kind of the first expression you know that i get got to see this vehicle now i kind of mentioned to you you know is this really a mustang or not that was the real question that i had and um here's why i think it really is i know there's a lot of people out there that's like ah, it shouldn't be Come on, give it a break. Move on. Here's the neat part. Uh, when they introduced the Mustang, it was cool, man. It was awesome. You could go out and yeah, it was affordable, this cheap uh, 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 pony car. They bring this thing back and they pack it full of this awesome technology. Stuff that like blows your mind. Again, how do you get uh, blown away by a car? Through a ton of power and a ton of technology. A- automated driving, all these cool things. So. In, the, in a certain sense, just for the characteristics of what this vehicle is and what it can do, it should be called the Mustang. And that's why I think the all-new 2021 Mustang Mach-E deserves its name. And I haven't driven these things yet, so please stay tuned. I'm going to uh, go for a drive on them, and you'll check that out in another video. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being with me this whole time and getting to know this vehicle. If you like me, like this channel, like the cars, just subscribe to Island Ford and you're going to get dinged with a whole bunch of videos about cars that we post or things that we like. Anyways, have an awesome, awesome day.